Welcome to ME1201 Computer Aided Design. This is a 3D modeling activity using Autodesk Inventor 2020 for figure 7 question 4C. Okay, so let's head over our 2D drawing. You can find this on page 7 67. Page 7 67. Alright, so this is figure 7 question 4C okay, is a roller support. Now, let's simplify it further first to find what is the base feature that we need to create in your inventor. So as usual, we will remove any holes such as this diameter 12, diameter 24, and another diameter 12 here. Okay, This diameter 12 is true all the way. Secondary features such as this, all the fillets, let's remove them. All these fillets, ignore them. It will treat it as straight edges. Okay. What's left is actually just this shape here. Okay. This shape is R20 on the front. And then we have a length of 32. And a flat here. And the back end here will be the 42 mm. And here it has a thickness of rather weird here, which is 20 upwards and 70 downwards. I'll show you how to create this, how to achieve this 20 by 70 in your Autodesk Inventor. So upon completing this shape, we will next move to this diameter 48 and will be extruded by 50 mm. And thirdly, we will create the, the back spline here or the back spine here. Okay, so first will be this shape, second, this diameter 48 shape, and third will be this spine here, which connect it from this point all the way tangent to the diameter 48. Alright, let's begin. Let's head over to our Autodesk Inventor. This is your final product. Uh, looks complex, but yeah, still doable. Let's create a new file by clicking on the File tab. Click on New and under the Matrix folder, double click on Standard MM.IPT. First steps first, click on the plus sign to expand the origin folder. Left click on the YZ plane, press the Shift key and select the XY plane. Remove your shift key and right mouse click and enter the visibility. Okay, we have switched on all the three default planes from the origin folder. Okay, to begin with, let's begin with the, the first shape. Okay, I will draw a R20 circle here and then I will draw one, two, three, four, five lines to connect to this R20 circle. Now, let's click on the top plane, the XZ plane, create a new sketch here. We're going to circle, starting from the default uh, projected origin point. We will left click once and drag it upwards. Let's apply the dimensions for this uh, circle first. So go to dimension tool, left click once, on default, since it's a full circle, it always will be dimensioned as a full diameter. Okay, But from our drawing, it's only showcased as R20. So instead of applying the dimensions first, right mouse click, select the dimension type, and click on radius. Left click once and enter there 20 and click on the tick icon here. Now we will go into line. We will start drawing. One horizontal line, a short one, a vertical line, rather long. And then same thing for this guy. It should be tracing from here all the way down. They are sharing the same value here. 
and then since we want the tangent constraint to this circle itself we will begin from this point and then end onto here if you notice as we slowly move inwards upon tangency the tangent constraint will symbol will appear okay when that symbol appears we know that now this line and the r20 circle are tangent at one single point so left click once more we will apply the same thing again we will start from this far end left click once to start the line and then slowly we will shift our cursor until the tangent constraint symbol appears left click once more now let's apply the dimensions so dimension from here to this vertical line it's 32 and from this here to the vertical line it's 42 okay you notice that this line doesn't shift all the way here so when we want these two points to be aligned vertically to one another we will use the vertical constraint left click once now from that point itself you notice there's a trailing line once we have gone over the point that trailing line shows as vertical so this is correct so left click once and onto the second bottom line and left click onto the point again now it has shifted let's head over to our 2d drawing we are missing some dimensions here we doesn't know the width of this length here okay the length of this line so the length is actually 64. go into dimension mode change it to 64 and press the tick key right mouse click and press ok our sketch is still uncon fully unconstrained so left click and drag the green lines you'll notice that yeah you just need to shift it somewhere right in the middle okay to do so we can constrain the midpoint of this vertical line to this horizontal axis so point to line we will use coincident find the midpoint here and we have a fully constrained line and fully constrained sketch here finish your sketch as mentioned just now we will have to extrude this in two values okay upwards by 20 mm downwards by 70 mm let's head over to our extrude tool okay select your profile first here here and here let's just double check again oh i missed out a small portion here and a small portion at the bottom here no worries that's the reason why you need to always check again on your work to make sure you have selected all the correct features and now instead of using this default direction we will instead use the asymmetry direction okay what it does here that this option allows you to go uh, two ways of two values okay so direction a okay here will be 20 and direction b will be 70 and if you think that you have the wrong dimensions value uh, applied in the different uh, text box you just click on this flip direction it will just flip the value around but for our case it's still correct and then press ok We will now create the diameter 48 at the back here. So this diameter 48, it existed along this plane itself, okay, where we extruded upwards and downwards. So we can use the existing plane to create the diameter 48, and we will extrude downwards in the direction of 70 by 50 mm. Okay, and this diameter 48 is actually the center of it is away by 165 from the center of this R20 circle. Now, starting from this X, Z plane, create a sketch. We will now project this horizontal edge here. Project geometry and select this edge. Go to circle. 
hover over it if you have uh, if you have successfully snapped on onto the line you notice that the projected edge got, gets highlighted so once more let's dimension it from this center to the center of here we will be 165 press tick with a diameter of 48 tick and lastly we just need to extrude it downwards by 50 mm so finish your sketch click on the extrude tool select the profile direction let's flip it over with a value of 50 mm press ok we will now create the the backbone here or the spine here okay the spine starts from this edge all the way tangent to this curvature okay similar case as what we have drawn for this here we always go to the okay since the tangent symbol will be appearing somewhere here we always start from the far side so we start from this point downwards similar for this we start from the far side which is this point inwards all right click on the x z plane create sketch go to line from here make sure there's green dot and then we move it slowly inwards by we move in slowly until we find the tangent symbol okay you need to move very slowly so for those who have very sensitive mouse please tune down the uh, dpi so once we get that uh, constraint the tangent constraint click once and we repeat to the bottom side here far side and then inwards you have to zoom in slightly more just to find the tangent symbol If it doesn't show, no worries. Right mouse click, press OK. We will constrain them manually. So click on this coincident constraint, select the point to the curve, and then click on tangent constraint, apply the line to the curvature. So that's the manual method. Press the F7 key to make sure that you have a close profile as such. Click on finish sketch and click on extrude tool. Select your profile and in this time we will extrude it by 12 mm. The direction is incorrect so let's flip it over and press OK. Alright, we have covered all the uh, the major basic shape, the major base shape for this question. We will now try to do the simple, simple secondary features from the left side here, and then we will make our way to the right side. Okay, so left first. So we have this diameter 32. Okay, let's trace it upwards. It's here. And this diameter 32 is extruded by 4 mm here and it exists in two directions so means one at the bottom here and one at the top here okay so here now we just need to create that go to inventor starting from this top plane select it by left clicking it click on create sketch go to circle select the center for this here click on dimensions and enter there 32 click finish sketch select extrude tool and we'll enter 4mm press ok repeat this whole feature the same thing but instead to the upwards we extrude it downwards 
So select this feature, this face, create sketch, go to circle, find the center, select once, drag it slightly outwards and select once more. But this time, since we already have a diameter symbol here, okay, diameter 30, 32, we will share the same dimensions from the top one. So click on equal, select here, and select here. If you notice, we have the same uh, circle drawn from the top to the bottom here. Finish your sketch, and we'll extrude again once more by 4mm. Press OK. We will next create this feature here. Okay, 66. And this extrusion is until 32 here, the line here. And lastly, the gap here is 12mm. Find a flat feature. Okay, common mistake. Uh, we will use this as a uh, creation, a sketch creation. Please do not do this because when we extrude, instead of going this way, we are going diagonally. This is what we are trying to avoid. So select this face and create sketch. Go to two point rectangle. Wiggle a little bit more so that inventor projects that edge. Left click once and then to this bottom here, left click once more. Dimension from here to here, 12 mm. And from here to here, it's 66 mm. Finish your sketch and extrude, cut all the way through. Okay. Cut boolean and through all. Press OK. Okay, now I will avoid doing the rib first because the rib looks very complex. So let's achieve the simpler items first so that we can get the overall shape of the whole model. So let's perform the shape here. Okay, this guy here is R12 with a thickness of 20 mm. Now we will begin from this XY plane, create sketch, we will draw a circle plus a rectangle. Okay, take note the center here is not constrained to the midpoint here. So if you have point to point constraint, we will use the coincident constraint. From the center of the circle, click onto the midpoint of the line. The dimensions are R12 with a length of 34, uh, 35, sorry, and this height of 25. So let's go to dimensions, click here, right mouse click, we need to change it to radius mode. Enter there 12. The height of this it's 25. And the length it's uh, 35. Okay, however, we have to draw a single line here to use that as a reference for our dimensioning. So go to line, find the midpoint of this circular feature, and drag it slightly down. Right mouse click, press OK, and we will convert this to your construction mode. Now dimension it, left click from here, all the way to the center of the circle, the R12 circle, and change the dimension to 35. Press the tick key. Now we can go and extrude this tool. Click finish sketch and select extrude tool. Select your features, extrude in symmetry with a thickness of 20mm. Okay, I have created something incorrectly here. So if you notice, even though we have created the sketch correctly, but when we are doing this in 3D form, okay, in 3D environment, 
because our sketch was only slightly constrained it's constrained but then constrained to the outermost of this uh, feature here the, the, the curvature here when we perform the extrude extrusion you notice there's an opening here okay when when this happened we cannot apply any fillet or any chamfer or any subsequent uh, features afterward we create a few problems here and there so always take note when we are extruding to a certain feature especially a, a curve or a very free form shape we need to actually sketch a little bit more right to the middle of the part so that we can uh, extrude as much as we can so if you come about this problem here when there's an opening okay just go back to your model browser click on the plus sign to expand and show the sketch number seven go to this icon here and double click on it okay press the f7 key what's next we just need to draw another two point rectangle to close it right onto the middle here click on two point rectangle starting from here all the way here and then right mouse click press ok we just constrain this line to this line so we will use the collinear constraint from here to here and once more here to this here and click on finish sketch we will now edit the extrusion 7 so go to that extrusion 7 symbol here okay this cube double click on it we will enter into the extrude tool dialog box again under profile make sure you select it to have this blue bar and select the icon here and press ok and now we do not have that uh, empty space there okay we have remedied that portion great let's create all the holes here diameter 12 true diameter 12 true and diameter 24 true okay so three holes let's perform the diameter 12 first so go, go to hole tools click on here and select a cylindrical feature as your reference make sure the hole type is none true all and 12 press ok repeat again to this here to repeat your last function or your last tool press your spacebar key click on this face to create your new sketch a new hole and select this cylindrical shape make sure it's true all again with a diameter of 12 and press ok now onto your diameter 24 click on hole or you can press the spacebar key again to repeat the last function select this face as your starting point and your diameter 48 curvature so that they take it as a reference and enter it as diameter 24 press ok we will now create this slit of width 4 mm okay so this slit is being performed from your plan view from here select the face and create a new sketch we will project this curvature here to get the center point here and we'll use that center point as your reference okay now we we'll use coincident right mouse click select others midpoint click and repeat again right mouse click select others we will use the point now we have centralized the sketch click on dimensions from here to here 4mm finish your sketch and extrude through all we will now extrude cut and press ok all right we are almost there we will finish the rib first and then following that we will perform your fillets so your rib has 
a few lines and edges to take note. We have this horizontal line that is 18 mm away from the spine with a R60 here and this R60 here. Okay, take note, this R60 is actually, the center of it is aligned to this curvature here and also tangent to this horizontal edge. So, we will use this as your reference. Click on the XY plane, create a new sketch. We will project this edge and this edge, okay, to use it as a reference. So, click on project geometry, select this horizontal line, and select this vertical line. Click on circle, from here until here. Make sure you move your mouse cursor slightly to the left or right. Okay, you will notice the symbol changes to a from a green dot to yellow dot with a tangent constraint. We want this tangent constraint. So press OK. Add your dimensions. Left click once. Since it's a radius, we need to change it to the right mouse click dimension type to radius again. 60. We need to align this point to this line. So we use coincident constraint from here to here. And we now end everything with the remaining line. So one horizontal line and one more tangent line here. Okay, let's dimension a little bit more. So dimension one to here, 18. Press the tick key and here right mouse click dimension type radius and we will select this R60 again okay and right mouse click press OK you'll notice that this circle and this line is not tangent to one another so go to tangent constraint select here and here once we are done right mouse click press OK Okay, you notice that this edge here is not touching to each other. We need to click on the point and move it inwards. With that, we can use the trimming tool. Left click once, hold on to it and drag it to cut whatever is not necessary or required. Here, here, and then let me cut here to here. Press your F7 key. Now we will use, we will highlight all the edges other than our newly sketched lines and transform them into construction edges. Click on finish sketch, click on the rip tool, select the profile, change to this option parallel to sketch plane and then pay attention if the preview is on, that's good. Just swap over the thickness to 12 mm as shown here. And press OK. All right, we are almost there. So let's add all the fillet. I will add R4 to one of these and the bottom here. So two R4. And I will also add R3 to the back here. Here and here. Go to fillet here and here. Four mm. Enter. Click on fillet. This edge here to here. Three mm. Press OK. The remaining is all R6 as shown here, unspecified radii to be R6. So click on fillet, change the radius to 6, enter, and select these edges 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the, the thing about fillets, always do by groups, do not try to do as one go. If one of the fillet fails, your whole fillet uh, tool will not show anything. So always go bit by bit. Do not try to be yeah too adventurous. Press OK. 
and then let's add a little bit more here here will form a full uh, chain line okay press ok again now let's double check in your drawing we have another fillet here which we didn't do and we also have a R6 fillet onto this uh, clamp here so let's add them go to fillet select this edge and here and also here 6mm press ok let's double check again if everything is well we have successfully completed our figure 7 question 4c all right happy trying guys